Hi, this is Hannes, and I'm here to talk to you today about building software like a bag of marbles and not a castle of Lego. Now, the first thing I want to talk to you about is Solid. We all go through a transition as developers where we first run into the wall when we build our first big ball of mud and all of our system becomes too complex and too tightly coupled. And we will start doing layers and after a while we will learn about Solid. And the first time you try and apply the principles, it may not work out exactly as planned and you will end up with still a bunch of abstractions over abstractions over abstractions. Um, but the cool thing is that once it clicks, the whole solid thing becomes really powerful and really well written solid code. For me, it clicked when I realized that interfaces should be owned by the consumer. So you should first think of what do I expect from this implementation and not about what do I already have that I want to extract an interface from. And that really helped me uh, make the whole solid story work for me as a developer. And when you write proper solid code, you will end up with a code base that is much more like a bag of marbles where it's really easy to replace something with the other and where all the code can be rearranged really quickly. Unlike this Lego castle you see right here. The Lego castle is actually constructed in such a way that if you want to replace the blue tower with the green one, you will actually have to tear down the gray walls as well. And that makes it really hard and time consuming. And a lot of our code is structured like that. But if you do proper solid, it's actually much easier to rearrange. So if you want to um, remove the blue marbles from the jar and then add the green ones, that will be a lot easier to do. And that is what proper solid code should be like. Now, if you want to put your solid code, which is probably the core of your business logic into like a bigger application, you're going to need an architecture that an encourages you to be solid. And for me, that is um, found most in, in onion architecture. You, onion architecture is a term that comes from Jeffrey Palermo, but you might may know it as clean architecture or ports and adapters or um, hexagon architecture. All these things, they talk about very similar concepts with different nuances. Now, what onion architecture looks like uh, what you do is you only point references in. So if you build your domain model, that should be free of any references, maybe with a few exceptions for the time library, stuff like that. But it should be very clean of any abstractions whatsoever. Now around that, you will build your domain services, which is your application logic. And around that, you will build your application services. And the application services are basic, basically what the rest of your application will consume from your core. And then everything else around it is seen as an integration. You want to talk to the file system or a database or even your UI. All of that will reference the core instead of the other way around. And that makes for a very nice uh, application of the same principle. You first define an interface in the, um, in the core before you actually build your external integrations. And that makes sure a lot of your integrations are really clean. They don't leak into your core domain. You're not tightly coupled. You can easily replace them. You can easily adapt them, change them for something else. And that is really, really powerful. And even the tests, they go in really clear cut places. So when you do tests, your core, you can easily unit test because there's not much things to mock. Um, all your infrastructure layer, you can really easily um, integration test. Um, and the same for your UI, UI and acceptance tests, you can put those in there as well. And when we are defining um, these dependencies, we, we have them in a reasy, really easy mockable way. Now, when you're writing your code like this and you're thinking of the bigger scheme of things, um, I've always been of the opinion that you should not complicate your life further than you have to. So I always start with a monolith and keep it simple for as long as I can and only apply distribution to a software system when it's absolutely necessary to do that. And for a lot of systems, it's just not necessary. But what we as developers want is really clear separation of concerns. So Martin Fowler once said that you shouldn't distribute about uh, until it's really necessary to distribute. I really like Fight Club, so this is um, the image that I have with that. 
Um, if you want to quote me on this, it's like never solve a code problem by introducing a deployment problem. Because if you do that, you will actually run into the wall really quickly if your code isn't properly structured in the first place. And that's a problem you should be solving before you actually distribute your software system any further. Now, if you want to build something modular, and we're talking about um, the story that I use when I give the full version of this talk, is where we are building IoT devices and we want to be able to add functionality and remove uh, functionality to an existing code base, you can use the plugin model and then you can still run everything in a model. It. And the idea is that a plugin should be an assembly that is easy to develop and easy to test and that doesn't have any tight coupling from the core. So just like the rest of your Onion architecture, your plugins should reference the core and not the other way around. And you will leave it to the startup behavior of the application and your DI container to actually load all of those plugins in and enable their functionality in the rest of the code base. That way you can enable and disable features by just adding or removing certain assemblies from what we are doing. There is a couple of rules that you have to stick to. You can only point in from the plugins to the core. Um, you should follow some conventions when you develop them and you have to be able to remove them without damaging anything and breaking anything in the application. Now, when you do this, there's a couple of challenges you are going to need to overcome. It's like you have a central UI in your monolith. You're going to need to add extra API calls or extra views to that. So you're going to need to find a mechanism to make that work. Actually, your central API may need to deal with derived types, which means that you need to deal with polymorphic deserialization, uh, but also like extension points for the logic in the central API. Um, and you also need to handle the way that it talks to your database because that also needs to know about certain derived types, add extra fields and handle the migrations on the database side. So once you figure all of that out, um, you will have a system that it makes it very easy to try run new functionality, build it, add it to your deployment, remove it again uh, without actually damaging your core um, application and your core monolith and still everything will run in one process and will be easy to troubleshoot, easy to debug, all that sort of stuff. So before you do anything else, structure your code. Plugins aren't that hard to do. There's a repository I will show you on uh, the coming slide where you can take a look how I did it with .NET 6. Um, and never solve a code problem with a deployment problem. Don't distribute if you don't have to. My name is Hannes. I'm the head of learning and development for a company called Access in Belgium. This is my Twitter handle and the repo where you can find the full .NET 6 thing to look at. Thank you so much.